What is 2024's top summer jam? And can it be from a year that is not 2024? I'm about to rule on it. You're about to see it. Smash that like, subscribe, etc. Here we go. Welcome to the Judge John Hodgman podcast. I'm Bail of Jesse Thorne. This week, clear and present banger. Christian and Sunni are part of a friend group that loves to discuss pop music. Christian asked the group to name their songs of the summer for 2024, but some members picked songs that aren't even from this year. Sunni says this is unacceptable. Christian says any summer counts. Who's right, who's wrong, only one can decide. Please rise as Judge John Hodgman enters the courtroom and presents an obscure cultural reference. When the Oldsmobile has got the top down on it, when the catamaran has got the drop down on it, when the flat of the land has got the crop down on it, some things were good before, and some things never were, but that summer feeling is going to haunt you one day in your life. Bailiff Jesse Thorne, please swear the litigants in. Christian and Sunni, please rise and raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God or whatever? I do. Do you swear to abide by Judge John Hodgman's ruling, despite the fact that every year since 1983, Judge Hodgman's Song of the Summer has been 99 Luft Balloons? I do. do. Judge Hodgman, you may proceed. (laughs) That's, you know, that is absolutely a clear and present banger. Uh, which is a little riff on a wonderful title. Uh, Sunni and Christian, you may be seated uh, for an immediate summary judgment. One of your favorites. Can either of you name the piece of culture that I reference as I enter the courtroom? <gasps> Sunni, what's your guess? Um, I'm going to go with what I had come in here to guess. It seems like a song lyric, and I'm going to go with a Mountain Goats song lyric. A Mountain Goats song. Not a particular song, just anyone. Uh, uh, Any s- uh, Mountain, Mountain Goats, Goats Song. Summer song lyric. Some, oh, excuse me, summer song. They're all the same. It's just a bunch of singing. <laughs> <laughs> just a bunch of beautiful words and music. Christian, what's your guess? Uh, I also think it was a song lyric. I'm going to say that it's a West Coast rap song about summer. And crops. And crops, <laughs> exactly. I mean, the crops is a dead giveaway because you would never see that in East Coast rap, but that's a big part of West right. Coast rap. Yeah. <laughs> West Coast agricultural rap. Agro rap. Uh, was there an artist that you wanted to attach to your guests? Um, well, let's just go with Snoop Dogg. Sure. That's always a good guess for anything. If I were, now see, here's the thing, because I got word in the uh, briefing that Christian, you're a music nerd. So I had to go pretty obscure with this one. If I had said this one, would you have guessed? And, and Sunni, you're also going to get to guess. And as I think back, it makes me wonder how the smell from a grill could spark up the world's most toxic impulse. No, a bell? it does not. What's the world's most toxic impulse in the Judge John Hodgman universe? Nostalgia. Correct. As I think back, it makes me wonder how the smell from a grill could spark up nostalgia. Summertime by DJ Jesse Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Mm, okay. Song yeah. of the Summer, 1991. But okay, I should have gone with that one. 1991 <laughs> through 2024 inclusive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Probably the <laughs> song of the summer forever. We just we just, proved, we just proved Christian's point, but I, because I was concerned that Christian would be a ringer or a ringer, based on our incredible title for this uh, week's podcast, uh, I'm go, I had to go all the way back, in fact, to 1983, to not a rap artist, but in fact, uh, the wonderful, beautiful, naive lyrics of one Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers from the. Fourth album by Jonathan Richmond. Jonathan sings the name of the song is That Summer Feeling. And it speaks specifically of that toxic impulse. That summer feeling is going to haunt you one day in your life. Some things were good before, but some things never were. And the whole song, I had never heard this Jonathan Richmond song before. Have you heard of it? Did you, does it ring a bell to you, Christian or Sunni? I'm, I've heard it, but I, it doesn't stick in my head. Now. Well, it's a real danger. Put it, in your, put it in your convertible when the Oldsmobile has the top down on it. Or on your catamaran when the drop down's on it, when you're driving by those land with the crop down on it, because I guess summertime you've brought in the crops. I don't know. But it's a haunting song. It has no drops. <laughs> Only the catamaran <laughs> has a drop. No, the song itself does not have a drop, but it's beautiful. And it reminded me that summer kind of often feels 
like something you really only fully experience when you're thinking about it once it's over. Because it happens. We're coming into the summer right now as we record. And it happens so quick. And yet your memories of it are so prolonged and deep. If they're good memories. And I hope they are for everyone. Have a great summer, everybody. Uh, school's out. Bye. I'm not doing this anymore. Oh, wait, we have to. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so excited. So excited to run away. But no, school's still in. We got to hear this case. Uh, no one guessed it. So let's get into it. Uh, who brings uh, this case before me for justice? I do. Suni, it's nice to see you again. You are on our show in Chicago, correct? This is correct. Now, were you the person who ate half an olive from a martini or hated the person who ate half an olive from a martini? I, I wouldn't go so far as to say I hated the person, but I hated the action of eating half the right. olive, which then you proceeded to do ad nauseum on stage in front of me. Thank you very much. I love olives by the half. Well, anyway, it's nice to see you again. And But Christian, I've never met you before. You're completely unknown to me. We established that. Yes. We met, we met at the Field Museum in Chicago after a medallion status event. Indeed. But I have no memory of, of it, so I'm not recusing myself. Like all the best judges, I refuse to recuse myself under any circumstances. No matter what flag your wife flies. No matter what flag I'm flying. Right now, my flag has half an olive on it, which is the, the new standard of House Hodgman, by the way. Thank you, Suni. <laughs> all right, Suni, what's the dispute? What's this thing about the Song of the Summer? What's going on? So Christian and I are in a music league that actually he started a number of years ago uh, during the pandemic. It's through a popular streaming app. Yeah. Um, all right. First of all, I just need you're both <laughs> under fake oath right now. This is my worst night. This is what I was worried about. Tell me what Music League is and are you employed by this company to buzz market this app? No. Christian? I am not. All right. What is it, Suni? Basically, um over the course of I think we do 10 weeks. I don't know if that's just standard. No, no, or... no, no, no. I need you to go back and tell me what is Music League because I did not bother to do any homework to find out. Because why? I'm not being paid by them. So Music League is uh, a, available through this streaming app where you can sign up with a group of people and you get a prompt every week. What is it, a game? Yeah. It's okay. a game, but there's no prize really. It's just, you know, you you rack up points and it's for bragging rights, I suppose. Okay. But All right. So you sign you a group of friends sign up and all the friends get a prompt every week. And a prompt might be something like. What's a song that you listened to in high school that you still listen to now? Uh, OK, Tom Waits, all of them. Good. Got it. <laughs> That's what I put in. And then, and then and then everyone in the team puts in their own answers. Right. And then what happens, Suni? And then um, there's a voting period and you uh -huh. have uh, we have 10 votes. You can put them all on one song. You can distribute them amongst Each different songs. Each person has 10 votes. Each person has 10 votes. Oh, it's like if you live in Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, Very yes. much. I understand. <laughs> uh, and then at the end of the voting period, you get to see the results and who. Uh, and the voting is anonymous. You don't know which person put in which song. You just are blindly voting on the song itself. And then at the end... You get to see which song wins. You get to see who put in which song. So you're saying that if Jesse and I were doing uh, Music League and the prompt was name a song that you listened to at high school and I said uh, uh, Ruby's Arms by Tom Waits, Jesse would put all 10 votes against me to try to deny my reality that I listened to that song simply to spite me. I mean, you would do that, right, Jesse, if you had a chance? I'm not familiar with the artist, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> there is a downvote option. We don't use that anymore, but... You can have everybody gets 10 votes plus a down vote. So I would assume in that case. But it's not something like, tell me a song you remember. It's like, what is the best aha song? Or what is the best Tom Waits song? And people would vote on that. It's, a, it's like, it's a matter of opinion, but not a matter of fact. So the example you gave me, Christian, was very bad. Well, I think. Well, they're all kind of a matter of opinion yeah, to a certain bad. degree. Yeah, but um, Christian said, name a song that you listened to in high school that you still listen to today, then well, what happens is you get that playlist and you listen to it and then you vote on which song, whatever your voting criteria are, you vote on the songs or for the songs that you think are either the best interpretation of that prompt or maybe the song you like the best. The points get tallied up and then somebody wins the round. Got it. I think maybe like a better example of a Thank prompt. you, Suni. <laughs> Um, one of the prompts we had a while ago was a song with a name in the title. So everyone picks a song with a name in the title. 
You get the playlist. Ruby's Arms, Tom Waits. Right. That's one I put in. Jackie Wilson said by Van Morrison. Right. And then everyone gets that playlist. They listen to the songs and then they vote for the ones they like the best or thinks is the best representation or Hold whatever on. it Hold is. Hold on, I'm changing it. Jackie Wilson said by Dexie's Midnight Runners. Come on, Eileen, by Dexie's Midnight Runners. Well, all right. So then I understand, I understand the game. And it, this sounds like a lot of fun, but I'm not going to say that because they're not, they're not sponsoring this and I'm afraid I'm giving them free advertising. I'm still afraid that both of you are shills for this thing. But it's not actually run by the streaming service. It's actually just one guy who, who like created this and gets it out there. So he wouldn't even be able to pay us or pay me. But the songs have to be on that streaming service. Right, because that's where the playlist comes from. Okay, well, I I like a thing that's built by one guy, so good job, one guy. Music League, sounds like fun. So you're part of Music League with a group of friends. Okay, Suni, now I understand. So tell me what happened. So again, we've been doing this for a number of years. I think we're on the 18th iteration of this Music League. Um, Members have come and gone, but there's a pretty much a solid core group of us who've been doing this uh, since the pandemic yeah, so we've had a number of of categories. Some of these prompts we have recycled, reused. Christian normally comes up with all of them, but sometimes some of us chime in with with prompts that we think should be in future leagues. So anyway, recently in this league, we had a prompt, and the prompt was 2024 Song of the Summer. Mm-hmm. And who came up with that prompt? I did. Christian did. Yeah. Okay, good. And so I put in my... 2024 Song of the Summer. Which is? Bodyguard by Beyonce. Bodyguard by Beyonce. Very popular song. Yes. A true banger. From an album full of bangers. Right. Anyway, I was surprised when the playlist opened up to see that the vast majority of the songs were not from 2024. Wow. I would say less, fewer than 50% were from 2024. The rest were from... I think one went back to like 19, the 70s. What was that? Summer Madness by Cool and the Gang? I don't remember what it was offhand. Yeah. That's the one it probably was. Ten votes up probably. for that one. <laughs> it was probably Summer Madness <laughs> by Cool and the Gang. Summer Madness by Cool and the Gang. I, I'm pretty sure it was not that. Christian, what was your pick? I honestly don't remember. I, I, there was no it, way you could have prepared. <laughs> in my when defense. Did, in did my you defense. know you were coming in today? <laughs> Do you know where you are right now? (laughs) I remember now it was uh, Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter. All right. That's one that I saw on a list of summer songs when I was trying to do my homework, but I didn't listen to it. I'm going to listen to it right now. I'm going to tell you if it's a banger or not. He's listening. He's listening. Jesse, it's a banger. Confirmed. (laughs) John's dancing. You you can't see that on the audio, but. I'll be listening to that in my car this summer for sure. Great. 2024 song of the summer, possibly. Doors off, volume up. What what makes a good summer jam, the two of you? I think it's got to be it's got to be upbeat. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say a you know light subject matter. Although the song that won this did not have light subject matter. What was the song that won? Uh, Heinz Hall by Macklemore. Oh, the uh, uh, anti the the protest song that Macklemore uh, of all right, people of put out. Got yeah. it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it has to be light, fun, upbeat. Um, and like, I think it has to be a pop song, whatever that means. Like it has to be sort of the type of music what that does is it mean? Uh, whatever's on the radio right now. I Jesse, think you know, know, music, what does pop music mean to you? Uh, it used to be R and B music performed by white people. Um, <laughs> that, that definition has expanded somewhat in the last couple of decades. I mean, I, I think it is a, uh, it is a topic of much discussion among musicologists and culture studies enthusiasts to say nothing of music critics, but I think it tends towards music with a broad appeal, uh, but also it tends towards music that uh, in a historically raucous context might have been looked down upon, uh, which is to say music that appeals to uh, young women and queer people in particular. Got it. So, Suni, what were some of the songs that surprised you because they weren't from 2024? 
Um, I think one of the more surprising ones, we have one member of the league who, whenever possible, will put in a Weird Al Yankovic song. So uh, party of the it. CIA. Uh-huh. Look, I love Weird Al Yankovic. Don't get me wrong. But, uh-huh. uh, that was so party of the CIA was one of them. I have heard that song. Anyone who's seen this weird dad cruise down a town, cruise down a lane in Maine in an open Jeep listening to that song knows that I know how to get down. That is truly a song of a summer. For sure. Of a summer. Yeah. yeah Not yeah, of 2024. Right. Any other, any other, uh, any other ones? Roger Miller's Summertime in the Summertime by Roger Miller? There are a few songs that are about summer. summer. Yeah. So there's a Iris Dement song called Hotter Than Mojave in My Heart, for example. Mm-hmm. Not um, what Not I would consider a pop summer song, but a song about heat and the desert. Sure. Was it a 2024 song just out of curiosity? 1992. Uh, were you surprised, Christian, when you saw songs that were not released in 2024? Um, I, I think I was surprised that there were so many that weren't. I wasn't surprised that some of them were not from this year. Uh, w- did, and when you saw these 20, non-2024 songs, were you like instant disqualifi- disqualification? Do you have that power? I do have that power. Uh, I don't think I've ever used it. And I did I don't not think th- I realized you had that power. I can do Here we anything. go. Wow. Yeah. Um, I did not. Uh, I didn't think that there was anything wrong with the songs that people had submitted. But Sunni, you did. Yes. And you lost. I did. So you are um, a disgruntled person. <laughs> well, I, is that not true? Of you're, every saying that the vote, you're saying the vote was rigged and you deserved to win. I demand a recount. Um, well, I do not recuse myself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. And with your argument being what exactly, Sunni? The prompt was 2024 Song of the Summer. Mm -hmm. That to me is obvious. It needed to be a song from 2024. Not necessarily the best song to listen to this summer, no matter when it's from. Right. uh, The best song to listen to this summer from this year. Yeah, I don't know why I'm making that stupid argument. That's Christian's stupid argument. And all these other people's stupid argument. I mean, it seems pretty clear, Christian. How do you defend... Not disqualifying all these non twenty twenty four songs. I just feel like I just want everybody to get along. <laughs> I mean, if this will do it, I say we should go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very low, low stress, low stakes, and so I just wanted to. I didn't feel the need to to call anybody out, especially since it seems like a minority of uh, members of the league actually submitted current 2024 songs you know when i was educated in literary theory at yale university i was taught that the author was dead by roland bart so therefore authorial intention has no meaning but i am going to ask it in any case christian because i don't think you're dead when you wrote the prompt 2024 song of the summer what did you have in mind what was the framers intent i'm a strict music league originalist the framers intent was a song from 2024 that represents that is the song for the summer. Basically, my intent was what SUNY uh, went with. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. And yet it was within your power to disqualify those people, but you were afraid to because you thought their feelings would be hurt. Is that not right, Christian? That is not exactly right. Well, then tell me what's exactly right. We've never had any sort of conflict in this league. This started out during the pandemic. It, we were all sort of, you know, stuck. And this was an opportunity to kind of get together, have a little bit of community online when we couldn't be face to face, learn some new songs. I have another music league that's a lot more cutthroat uh, and people say bad <laughs> things about people's songs. And so this one was just like a this was just more nice, like, you know, and I will also say that there is a way to express your displeasure and that is don't vote for those songs you have another music league that you say is more do these music leagues have names uh they sort of i mean uh, this one is called uh mischief and that one is called maserati and i honestly don't even remember why i chose those names you just insist on m words what was the worst conflict ever in maserati the cutthroat league well the very first league 
was actually all the people from what ended up being both of those leagues together. And after a few rounds, it became very clear that some of those people were much more raucous and sort of serious and were looking for, tended to go with more obscure, uh, kind of point scoring <laughs> types of songs. And some of the people were definitely more, hey, this is fun. Let's put this together. I don't really want to argue. Uh, I don't want to you know, say anything bad about anybody other's song. So after that first league, that's when I split him into two so that those of us who wanted to go one way could do that and those of us who wanted to go the other way could do that. So you're saying Maserati is full of raucist, uh, uh music snob, weird beards who like to paz and jop each other on the head and you wanted to isolate them from the nice people. Yes, mischief. Okay, absolutely. Got it. And let me and now let me ask you a question, Suni. There had been a downvote option in mischief, right? And that you eliminated the downvote option, correct? Yes. Was that due to some conflict in mischief? I don't. I think actually, when we realized we didn't have to use it, the majority of us were like, "Yeah, let's not do it," because it does feel mean spirited. And there were some times I'm like, I may not vote for a song, but I don't want to actually have to downvote a song. Is is mischief the conflict free utopia that uh, Christian tried to engineer? I would say for the most part, yes. Until now. Until now, I'm, you're I'm mixing the boat. it up. Why is it important to you? Because I feel like words have to have meaning, and 2024 mm. song of the summer is a very like some of the prompts like, uh, you know, with a, a song that you listen to from high school, like there's a lot of subjectivity to that. Right. Uh, and and what what song? Because it could be a song that came out when you were in high school, or it could be a song that you just discovered when you were in high school, but it came out years before. So there's a lot more flexibility, wiggle room with that category. But with some a category like this, it's very clear. 2024 song of the summer means it, again. It it even 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 if it said just song of the summer, that's questionable, right? Typically, I think song of the summer means the song of the summer that you are entering. But that at least maybe could have been a little bit more flexible. But the fact that it had 2024 Song of the Summer, to me, makes it very clear of what it was supposed to be. Christian, did you take this uh, take this dispute over to the um, hipster nitpickers over there in Maserati? Uh, I did not, but everybody in that league posted a song from 2024. Oh, so you po you you posted the same prompt to both leagues? That a lot of times I'll do that. Yeah, the same prompt goes to both leagues. So they all picked twenty twenty four songs. Yes, it would seem like they're speaking with their votes that it should be twenty twenty four songs. I think that if you are tuned in, no no pun intended, to sort of the conversations around music, if you're extremely online about music, you know that. Or you, you know, you know that song of the summer means a song that's going to be big this summer. I think if you're a more casual music listener, you're not necessarily knowing that like record companies put millions of dollars into promoting specific songs to be the song of the summer. You just remember the songs you liked in the summertime. So you're accusing the folks in mischief of being lovable simpletons <laughs> who aren't particularly discerning. I, I think that's fair. But on the other hand, they were the ones who were more creative in their interpretation. They weren't simply swallowing the the music labels propaganda by saying the biggest songs that have been marketed for the summer specifically. They were coming up with interesting ideas. Yes. And they also were putting out song, songs that were from this year, but that weren't uh, the big pop songs. They were more sort of underground, rocky kind of stuff that happened to be from this year. Sounds like Mischief is a pretty cool group of people. It is. For the most part. Yeah. What is the title you hold running this thing, Christian? It's, it's probably it's probably commissioner. I was going to say, I think I we call you the commissioner. Yeah, probably. Right. Yeah. Who elected you commissioner of mischief? Um, I, I, I seized the title myself by creating the league. By the way, commissioner of mischief is my favorite Metallica album. <laughs> Suni, is this all a play for you to become commissioner of mischief? Oh, no. I, I don't want that responsibility. Why? Uh, why? It seems like you do a good job. What does the job entail? Not much. But it, coming it, up with the prompts. Well, coming up with it. But I mean, I I mean, I just basically look at other people's music leagues and find prompts that seem good. Yeah, I mean, look at Christian. He's 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 commissioning two different music leagues, but he's given the same prompts. He's lazy, yeah. wishy-washy. It's time for new blood. 
It has been 18 leagues. 18 leagues. Has, yeah, I know. I still feel like I don't want that responsibility. There are also other, like... What if I were to rule in your favor under the condition that you take over? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if I like that. Why? Why are you afraid of leadership? Oh, I'm not afraid of leadership. Not by any stretch. Um, but in this case, I don't I don't want to have to deal with people who think they can do a better job than me. Oh, you think that if I open the door <laughs> to a power struggle, <laughs> That's right. you're not going to be able to hold the commissionership for very long because people will be coming after you. I don't know that anybody else really wants to do it besides Christian. He, he's been doing a good job, you know, for the most part. And he has, you know, you had asked before if there were any other uh, uh, conflicts. And I actually thought of one. Go on. There We used to, and again, we've kind of had to abandon this because we've been doing this for so long. But for a while, there was sort of the unofficial rule that you weren't allowed to select a song that had been selected in a previous prompt in a previous round. Like, we had to come up with completely new songs. So Christian used to have, and maybe still maintains, a spreadsheet of every song that was submitted for every prompt in the league. And so you were supposed to, like, go check that, make sure you're, the song you wanted to do hadn't been submitted before, before you submit it. And if it had been, then people wouldn't vote for it. We got dinged for it. In other words, over 18, over 18 iterations... You were not so ever supposed to submit the same song twice? You were not. So the league, um, when you enter your song, if you've entered it before, it tells you that. So you can't really put in your own song again. But you, we weren't even allowed if somebody, like I couldn't submit a song that Christian had submitted before. It's important to have these rules, John, because otherwise I'll just submit It's Bigger Than Hip Hop by Dead Prez over and over <laughs> and over. <laughs> But according to Christian, this should be a self-regulating mechanism where you would eventually be downvoted, so it wouldn't matter. So why do you have this spreadsheet, Christian? I think to make things a little more, I don't want to say challenging, but to kind of get people to expand their kind of universe of music, it, it would be easy to go back to the same like favorites all the time, right? And if a song wins a round, a previous round, you might be like, oh, I can put that in and I know I'll get points. We eventually abandoned that, never officially, but 18 leagues, 10 rounds each, 10 people. I mean, we're well over 1,800 songs picked. So at, at a certain point... It, the spreadsheet was getting very long. Yeah, and it was just like it, nobody wanted to go and like scroll through and say, oh, somebody did that song. But for the most part, people don't, I don't think, resubmit songs very often. You know, Suni, if I were to appoint you commissioner of mischief, mm -hmm. you don't have to have a spreadsheet. Oh, no, you, I wouldn't. You can do whatever you want. Right. Suni, do you consider your group of friends to be serious about music? Um, to varying degrees. I think some are and some aren't. Christian, I think, is is an example of a, a friend who is serious about music, but not all of my friends are. What about you? I think I'm pretty serious about music. You did not win. I very I think I may have come in last that round. <laughs> well, that was my question. I was just trying to establish if it was just an all a winner take all situation or if there are rankings ultimately and just how badly beyonce was dealt injustice in this situation and i i also take offense on behalf of beyonce because really come on that was the right answer you know weird al yankovic is the nicest guy in the world and truly one of the superstars of music i mean a person who enjoys fame across multiple yeah. generations and has absolutely earned it uh, obviously a parodist by trade, but a truly creative genius and someone who, I'm just going to brag, uh, sends me a perhaps automated but still heartfelt seeming email on my birthday every year. I love Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, I will do anything for him. But I would not rank Party in the CIA above Bodyguard for Song of the Summer 2024 in under any under any system of government. Doesn't that seem like there's something profoundly corrupt in the system, Christian? It does. And I will say that actually Bodyguard did beat Party in the CIA in that I round. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I came in last. No, no, actually Party in the CIA okay. did. Okay. No offense, Weird Al. Wow. My apologies. I have a question. I don't want to ask it indelicately, but I can't think of a different way to ask it. How old are the people in the Music League? So. The majority of them 
are about our age, which is we are Gen Xers. Mm -hmm. I think I understand that age range. There are a few who are a little younger, probably around 40. And then there is the one guy who's like 25. To what extent do you think that the song of the summer, the released this year, hot this year, coming out of everyone's car windows, song of the summer, is defined by the music tastes of 47 year olds? <laughs> And to what extent do you think 47-year-olds might be sensitive about whether or not they are defining what that song is? I think it's being defined by 47-year-olds who think they know what 17-year-olds want to hear. Whether or not they do, I don't know. But I don't know a lot of 47-year-olds that are listening to um, Espresso on a regular basis. Real brag from Christian there. Do you think... Do you think that the strict adherence to the 2024 rule among the Maserati group may have to do with the fact that those, I'm going to go ahead and say guys, are trying to prove that they know the latest music, whereas maybe in Mischief, people are a little bit more playful and personal and like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interpret this in a little bit of a funny way. To some extent, yeah. I think that all the guys who are in uh, Maserati... I was right. Yeah. ...are... Um, really into music in a specific way uh, that usually involves a guy with a guitar, a guy with a drum, and a guy with a bass, or maybe some keyboards. Um, and they're looking for songs that aren't maybe what everybody else is thinking about. There are, in other words, music fans who consider other people enjoying a song to be a demerit towards that song. Uh, And there are music fans who consider more people enjoying that song to be a positive quality of that song. I think that's true. Although I don't want to cast aspersions on the guys in Maserati. Yeah. What was the top song in in Maserati? Do you remember? So the song that won 2024 song of the summer uh, for Maserati was Starburster by Fontaine's DC. Okay. Never heard of that. I'm going to take a listen. I'm going to I'm going to audition that right now. Starburster by Fontaine's DC. That's a good that is what I would say is definitely a rockist song. That is a banger in the sense of an Irish banger because it's an Irish post-punk band. Christian, what were you afraid of? Why were you afraid of bringing down the hammer? I think that Sunni makes a lot of good points in particular that one. Like, why not push mischief a little bit further in the correct direction here? So I think that the role that mischief plays is doing that wide. You might want to think about it as wide, but not deep versus deep, but not wide. And so I worry that if I So you're saying that the group exists solely to suggest new songs for you to listen to. (laughs) That's why I started it. Okay. (laughs) Suni, did anyone else express frustration with the outcome of the- of the league? No. You're the sole malcontent. Yes. Well, yes. yes. Those only one who said something on the Discord. Who knows what right. the other people are thinking? And when you said something on the Discord, did anyone respond? Just Christian. And what I what think. was Christian's response? I will not change the outcome. It was like, you know, people can interpret it however they want to. People can interpret it however they want to. And I will say, for the most part, I agree with Christian. I think for the most part, he's right. The The fact that this is a more laid back league and that people can be a little bit creative with how they want to um, respond. So, for example, there was one league where all the prompts were emojis and it was mm. great. Like the way people responded to those, like each playlist, you had no idea what you were going to get. And it was fun to kind of see, oh, some people put these kinds of songs and other people responded in this way. Like that was fun. I appreciated that. Um, And for the most part, I appreciate that. But I do think there is a narrow ruling to be had that if uh, a prompt includes a year in it. So, for example, if the prompt had said 1975 Song of the Summer, of course, everyone would have found a song from 1975 to put into it. Um, If it has a year in it, then that year has to mean something. And we have to put songs in from that year. Yeah, that seems pretty obvious. Christian, do you want to do you want to continue running this group? How would you feel if I were to rules that Sunni takes over as commish of mischief? I mean, 
That I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I would think that Sunni might have a problem with that. Yeah, I'm let the record show. Sunni is making a lot of a lot of noises and a lot of drawing her drawing her uh, her hand across her neck, as in let's shut this down right away. Sunni, you really don't like this. You really would rather s- snipe from behind rather than take the lead. In this case, yes. Sunni, if you don't want to take over, what would you have me rule if I were to rule in your favor? Again, I think a very narrow ruling. Uh, that says that if there is a year in the prompt, we have to, that the year has to mean something, that that is the, we have to select songs from that year. But I mean, how do we account for the damages so far? I mean, you're you're just going to let this go? I mean, I would like maybe on the Discord, for example, for Christian to uh, publicly say that he should have clarified and that uh, they should have been songs from 2024. You You want Christian to be a little bit stricter and a little bit clearer in his instructions, and yet you right. do not want the grave responsibility of entering things into a into a website. Correct. What do you think would happen if I were to rule in your favor in the group, right? And just say, sorry, it's Beyonce. Everyone's wrong. What would happen on the Discord if I, Judge John Hodgman, a person who used to be on television, said, hey, excuse me, Discord, your opinions are wrong. It all should have been 2024 songs. And of the songs that are left, it's Beyonce. I'd be, I'd be fine with that. No, I know. That's how you would feel. <laughs> what do you think would happen <laughs> with the other people? Do you think you would face retribution? Oh, me personally? Yeah. I mean, I may face some retribution. Would there be fallout? Bringing this. There, there might... I, I don't, know, I feel I don't like... know what that would mean, though. Would like, it turn into a street be... fight? No, it wouldn't turn into a street fight. I think people would be like, uh, yeah, if that's the if that's the the what the prompt should be, then yeah, it'd be a fight between Beyonce and and Macklemore. But I think we all know how that would end up. Well, and if I eliminated all of the non twenty twenty four songs, then we know that there would be at least three. Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying it's Beyonce. Sorry. Thank you. My opinion. It's weird. I, f- I feel like I'm living in a world where Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't even know that was a nominee. It wasn't, surprisingly. No. It should have been, probably. Yeah. Everything seems wrong with what happened. Yeah. But I'm going to have to figure out how to straighten it out and bring justice to this world. Right. I think I've heard everything I need to in order to make my decision. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to go into my uh, LP listening booth at Cutler's Records in the past of New Haven, Connecticut. I'll be back in a moment with my verdict. Please rise as Judge John Hodgman exits the courtroom. Suni, how do you feel about your chances? I mean, I think if the judge hears my plea for just a very narrow ruling about years uh, mattering, like in the prompts, then maybe I have a chance. But I am a little bit concerned that he's going to make me take over this league. Yeah, you're obviously shirking uh, the responsibility that you desire. <laughs> In this instance, you you claim it's not your ordinary uh, way of being. Are there other leadership positions you can point to? Are you in the Kiwanis or I the Seroptimist? used to be the president of our local school board. There you go. Now we're so, talking. Christian, how do you feel? I wouldn't be surprised if I get ruled against. Um, I think that... You know, maybe it's a, the situation of not being clear enough up front that caused this confusion. And the year thing, you know, the fact that it had a year in the title probably should have been clarified. So it, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, but I mean, I'd love to be considered right also. That's, you know, also very important to me. What are you president of? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Nothing. Nothing. I'm a, I'm a, uh, you know, that's too much responsibility. Well, we'll see what Judge Hodgman has to say about all this when we come back in just a moment. <laughs> Judge John Hodgman, this may be the single most exciting time in the history of our podcast. We've been doing wow. this podcast over 35 years. 39 to, I mean, and who's counting? Yeah. And this is the peak of thrill ride adventure time. The Pasadena Goth Club t-shirts are here, but this is a contest, folks. 
That's right. Two will enter. Only one will survive. If you heard last week's program, we created a club for goths in the Pasadena area called Pasadena Goth Club. It is, of course, welcome. It's open to uh, non-goths and people anywhere in the world. All t-shirt wearers are welcome to join and vote with their torsos as to which will be the final and forever Pasadena Goth Club t-shirt design. We have two designs. Uh, one is a white on black design for our Belial worshiping audience. And then we have a pastel Pasadena themed shirt with the Pie and Burger logo uh, evoked on it as well. They both say Pasadena Goth Club. Two great vibes that really encompass both the goth and the Pasadena in the Pasadena Goth Club. Get them over at maxfunstore.com. Here's the deal. Two week order window. During that two weeks, you can get either one of these t-shirts. Once that two weeks is over, only the champion t-shirt will remain. So if you want to ensure that you can get in on this and get your preferred shirt, you're going to have to get it now. And then if your shirt wins, you can get it for everybody for Christmas. In fact, I encourage you to do so. And you'll be very proud of yourself. That's right. After July 1st, the losing shirt will be gone forever. So go over to the maxfunstore.com. And go vote with your torso. I loved getting to send a text to my friend Brian Fernandez, who who designed these shirts, uh, yeah. saying, I like it, but more brutal. <laughs> Make it more brutal, I said. That's the MaxFunStore.com. And hey, everybody, if you're a member of Maximum Fun, uh, thank you, first of all. And second of all, make sure to keep an eye on the BOCO uh, feed uh, because we've got another members-only mailbag coming out at the end of the month. And this one is a true banger. Banger. <laughs> it it's is. a clear and present bonger. And it's it uh, and it's terrific. And it's just for members. So uh, go go check it out. And if you're a member of MaximumFun.org, you can uh, send me an email at MaximumFun.org slash JJHO and say, I want to be part of the members only mailbag. Uh, this is a place where we can answer etiquette questions, advice questions, uh, or just read your comments. So go. it's a lot of fun. Members only mailbag for guess what? Members only in the BOCO feed. And if you want to become a Maximum Fund member, you can always do it at MaximumFund.org slash join. Judge Hodgman, at the end of this week's program, I will reveal my not released in 2024 Song of the Summer 2024, officially endorsed by Jesse Thorne. Yeah. Right now, I'm going to re release my Song of the Winter 2024, not released in 2024, as endorsed by Jesse Thorne. Okay, let's hear it. Away in a monger. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the case. Please rise as Judge John Hodgman re-enters the courtroom and presents his verdict. Well, I've given it a lot of thought. And uh, I have to say, I obviously share Sunni's distress at the outcome of this particular iteration of Music League. Um, the prompt was obvious and clear in its intention. Unfortunately, there had been precedent set where people would just ignore that and put in whatever they wanted, whatever they felt like listening to this summer. And because of a lack of oversight and a general wishy-washiness of leadership on Christian's part, that precedent has allowed to, been allowed to stand, and consequently, it has poisoned the results of this year's Song of the Summer 2024 uh, Music League. That said, you know, I feel like it is fairly cowardly of Suni to come to me, an outsider, to try to invalidate this year's results without her taking on any responsibility going forward. The fact is, she does not want to be the commissioner of mischief. Uh, Christian is, in all other respects, seems to be a good commissioner of mischief. Uh, I feel like, you know, uh, you, uh, double dipping in prompts over different groups feels a little, a little bit lazy, Christian. But I get it. You probably have some other job than this, too, that you have to pay attention to. And for the most part, you're very happy to have him lead unless it doesn't go your way and Beyonce's way. <laughs> And frankly, if it not if it doesn't go Beyonce's way, like that's Christian's problem because he's going to get swarmed. You know what I'm saying? Like now that the world knows that Christian allowed this to happen, it's going to be bad news for him. And you just get to waltz away, Sunni, into the next <laughs> music league or whatever it is and try again. I have to say that I don't like the outcome of this. And yet it's done. What's done is done. Everything was done by the rules and according to precedent. And Christian had a chance to step in and correct it chose not to, and you don't want to step up and do it 
And um, therefore, I have to say that it was properly ruled, even though I don't like the outcome. Hey, guess what? Sometimes when an election happens and we don't like the outcome, you just have to acknowledge it rather than try to break into my courtroom and hang me or whatever. <laughs> it's just how I see things. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand why you're outside of Four Seasons Total Landscaping, Sunny, <laughs> yelling at the sky. Oh, no. Oh, no. This has taken a terrible turn. Well, <laughs> you would not believe the flags flying outside Judge Hodgman's house. <laughs> yeah, I now have to fly my, my half-eaten olive at half-mast <sighs> in protest for your even bringing this to the court. But look, I understand. It was wrong, and Christian, I think, should in future consider being a little bit clearer in the instructions, um, because I think that Sunni is absolutely correct that, you know, this was an opportunity for the group to explore music that has been released this year, rather than try to come up with the funniest or in most interesting or most favoritist things that they want to listen to or, or sneak through. The funniest interpretation of Song of the Summer is a great prompt so long as it's clear, like, have it be a song of the summer, but it doesn't come out in the summer and never says summer. What I, you know, like, whatever it is, like, that makes for a more interesting prompt. Um, I'm sorry that no one understood the simple instructions that you gave them, Christian. And going forward, I hope that you give them more precise instructions so that everyone's playing on the same page and everyone has a good time. I'm not going to order you to rerun this particular league because what's done is done. We move forward in this lifetime, moves in one direction despite what some of the people in your group want to believe. They listen to old songs during the summer when we obviously you wanted a new song for the summer. But I, but I have not yet pronounced my sentence, and here it is. This is my sentence and my verdict. You're going to run Song of the Summer 1975. That's a great idea, Suni. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> Can't be 1974 because that's Summer Madness by Will and the Gang and the Obvious Winner. Uh, 1975, Song of the Summer. Any song that was released during and or in the run-up to the summer of 1975. Run it. And um, uh, put me down because I want to be a part of it. This is the sound of a gavel. Hey, have a good summer. <laughs> Judge John Hodgman rules that is all. Please rise as Judge John Hodgman exits the courtroom. Christian, you're vindicated. How do you feel? I feel pretty good. I, I think that that's a pretty good. I, I like the. Uh, I like the the. I think that the fair uh, ruling. I understand. The, you know, the, the, that was the previous rule, the previous round. Maybe if I had done something differently, we wouldn't have had this problem. But, uh, I think that I will take the, the judge's, uh, recommendation and just be a little more specific on prompts, uh, as long as I can find a way to do that and still not stifle the creativity of the group. Suni, how do you feel? So interestingly enough, I also feel somewhat vindicated because I think the judge clearly agrees with the interpretation of the prompt the way I saw it. And so that is, you know, I feel good about that. Uh, but I'm also a little tiny bit confused. Did the judge just give us prompts for our next league? I believe so. That's kind of amazing. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you both for joining us on the Judge John Hodgman podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Another Judge John Hodgman case is in the books. Uh, before we get to Swift Justice, our thanks to Redditor Great Muppet Kvetcher for naming this week's episode. <laughs> it's a good one. All Reddit names are good, at least that we've ever read. That's right. But I think that we have a, I think we have a special selection of especially good Reddit names because they're also the people who come up with the dumb puns that name our episodes. Yeah, I mean, as someone who is on the record for disliking puns and wordplay in general. I love going to the Reddit to see what people suggest for titles. They're all so funny and clever, I have to say. And it's a shame we can only pick one of them. Maximumfun.reddit.com is where you should do it. That's where we ask for our title suggestions. Evidence and photos from the show are on our Instagram account at Judge John Hodgman. Uh, they are also on MaximumFun.org if you go to this episode's page, if you don't have social media. We're also on TikTok and YouTube at Judge John Hodgman Pod, where you can watch John's... Uh, this is the only popular genre of YouTube video, so I'm glad we got into it. Uh, John's uh, Old Man Music React videos. 
<laughs> what? Yeah, this is like the top the top genre of music is I made my grandpa listen uh, to this Beyonce song. And it's just, a, it's an outrageous grandpa saying stuff, saying what they think of this Beyonce song they never heard. Oh, look, if I were, if I were a real entrepreneur, I would do a, 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 a video channel where uh, our children react to me singing Roll Out the Barrel. <laughs> you should please go over to the TikTok and the YouTube and please follow and subscribe and hit that bell uh, to indicate that you would like the notifications. Uh, we have full episodes there. We also have video only content there. And guess what? Anytime, and believe me, I've noticed anytime you comment on the YouTube, I get an email with your comment in it. So <laughs> if you, if you're looking to get a message to me, that's one way to do it. Hey, thank you to Phelps of restarting over on Apple podcasts. Phelps of restarting is a listener who gave us a five-star rating. They say that judge John Hodgman's their favorite podcast. They recommend it to friends and family members. They also say, quote, I can put it on in the car with kids who are now aged 14 and 20 and know that I will have a laugh and a discussion. Thank you for your thoughtful, caring, and wise judgment. And quote, thank you so much, Phelps of Restarting. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, uh, it really helps if you go over there and, and give us a rating and drop a few words of, uh, of comment there as well. It won't get emailed directly to me, but you can tell. We're watching, and what's more important is other listeners are uh, checking those things out. And these are the ways that the show uh, is discoverable these days. Uh, liking, subscribing, smashing buttons, leaving reviews. It's very, very, very helpful. So if you're in the mind to help, that's very helpful. Thank you very much. And you know what? No matter what app you're using to listen to this, if this is an episode you think might appeal to a friend of yours, send it to them. That's the that's the surest fire way for our show to grow. It means the world to us when you tell somebody, hey, I think you might like this show or, hey, I think you might like this episode because you know what? They might. I think we make a good show. Judge John Hodgman was created by Jesse Thorne and John Hodgman. This episode engineered by Max Fabian at Tightrope Recording in Chicago, Illinois. Our social media manager is Natty Lopez. The podcast is produced by A.J. McKeon. Our video editor is Daniel Spear. Natty and Daniel both sitting in on the recording this week. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Daniel's here beyond the other side of the window. Uh, Natty is secretly hiding in the video conference. Our producer, Jennifer Marmer. Now, Swift Justice, where we answer your small disputes with quick judgment. Mean Adeptness4998 on the Max Fun subreddit says... I want to get a minivan to accommodate our need for cargo space and low loading deck for pets. My wife thinks it's weird for childless couples to have a minivan. She's also worried that I will have it painted with a big cool wizard or maybe have it painted like the A-Team van. She's right, I would, but I don't think that's enough to nix the minivan. <laughs> Should we get a minivan? You know, I got into a minivan last night to take me to another part of the city. And I was like, why do people hate on minivans? This is great. Very comfortable ride. So versatile. I understand that they're associated with non-coolness, mean adeptness wife. I get it. It doesn't feel cool to be in a minivan, especially if you don't have kids. But this does seem like a reasonable car for you. And it, it does seem that it would be helpful with your, uh, with your animal children as well. So I'm going to say you should give it a try. And if you're worried about it not being cool... I have the solution for you. Don't paint a wizard on it. Don't paint it, paint it like the A-Team. Paint a post-apocalyptic landscape on it, and hovering over it is a skull head, and it's winking at you, and in gothic lettering it says, Commissioner of Mischief. That's a cool minivan. All right, we love hearing disputes between friends. Sunni's one of our rare litigants that we've had on the show twice, and both times she has sued a friend. Uh, I, hope that, uh, I hope everything's going well in her friend groups. But she's not the only one beefing with her pals. I know there are other friend groups out there who get into the same debate over and over and over again and want it settled once and for all. And now is your chance to have that happen. Is your friend group split about where your next hang should be? Maybe you're all going to go on a trip together. And you don't know where to go. Did your best friend call you the Rhoda to her Mary, even though that you know that you are the Mary? And who's the Phyllis, by the way? And what am I even talking about, says Generation Z? Did one of your friends Venmo request everyone for something so absurd that no one wants to pay? Send me your friend group disputes at MaximumFun.org slash JJHO. This means you, my mother-in-law Beth, and her friends from high school that go on a trip every five years together. 
Yeah, I want to hear from your mother-in-law, Beth, for sure, and the whole friend group. And I want to hear all of your disputes, right, Jesse? Maximumfun.org slash J-J-H-O is the place to send them in to us. John, I got a non-2024 Song of the Summer 2024 for you. Let me hear it. It's Low Rent Rendezvous by Ace Spectrum. Okay, I'm writing it down. Yeah, everybody enjoy that. Ace Spectrum, Pet Detective. Got it. Ace Spectrum. Ace Spectrum. Ace I wrote it down. Spectrum. Check it out on YouTube. We'll talk to you next time on the Judge John Hodgman podcast. Maximum Fun. A worker-owned network. Of artist-owned shows. Supported. Directly. By you.